Hello and welcome to the Terry White Tech Blog. My name is Terry White and we're going to take a look at one of my favorite gadgets and a competitor to that favorite gadget. One of my favorite gadgets, I have a few of these around the house, it's called the Amazon Echo. Now this is the original full-size version of the Amazon Echo. There's three flavors of it or three models of it. We'll get into that a little bit later. But here's the newest challenger to it. It's called the Google Home. And they both do kind of the same thing, of course, in different, depending on the area we're talking about, one will do it better than the other. And today we're gonna to take a look at um, sp some various queries that most people are likely to wanna ask, and we'll score them in the categories of, you know, like which one does music better, which one does, you know, um, directions or things like that better. We'll talk about those as we go. So let's talk about the hardware first, up first, and then we'll uh, get into some of the verbal commands. So first and foremost, as you can see, the Amazon Echo is about twice the size of the Google Home. And I gotta say, most of that is speaker. Like the top part is probably all the electronics to make it work. The rest of it is just beautiful sounding, gorgeous speaker. Uh, the Google Home's a lot shorter. It does have a good speaker as well, uh, but just the sheer size of the Amazon Echo and it just adds more bass and more just uh, richness in its sound. Not to, not to say the Google Home isn't good. I would just give the sound quality a little bit of an edge for the um, full-size Amazon Echo. Now, why am I comparing the full-size one compared to like two of the other models that they make? Because this is the most close and comparable in price. Uh, the Amazon Echo is, I believe, $179, whereas the Google Home is $159. There, is a, there are two cheaper versions of the Echo, but as far as characteristics, this is probably the closest one to compare it to. Now, there are some physical controls on both of them as well. Uh, for example, on the Google Home, it took me a while to figure this one out, but it has, it has a cancel. It has, okay. a, <laughs> it has a physical uh, button on the top to activate it. My apologies. It. No I don't problem. understand. <laughs> and I'm pressing that button. But it has a volume control on the top. Uh, it's kind of like a dial to dial it up and dial it down. It also has a button on the back to disable the microphone for privacy sake. So if you're in a situation where you kind of don't want it listening at all, you can physically turn the microphone off on either device. Therefore, it is no longer listening for anything, including the wake up word. Um, so if I have that off, I could say Alexa all day long and it will never respond because it's not listening for that word anymore. Now, as far as let's get that listening thing out of the way right off the bat, they're both always listening. However, what's more important is they're not always sending. I'd be a little creeped out if it was not only listening to everything I was saying, but also transmitting that data. Uh, both companies assure that they're in their privacy uh, policy that they're only listening for the wake up word. And then once it hears the wake up word, it starts sending the data from that point. So if you ask it a question, of course, got to send that question up to the internet and uh, respond to that question and then it stops listening. But at any given time, if you're in the middle of something sensitive, just turn, turn the microphone off and then it's no longer listening at that point. Okay, um, other than the physical size, the uh, Echo also has more integrated microphones. So it actually can hear better, uh, which is important, especially if you're trying to uh, have it hear you over what it's currently doing. Like if it's playing music very loud and you're trying to get it to pause, then you'd want it to be able to hear you. The Google Home only has the two microphones that we can see. So again, the Echo and hardware overall, I'd give the win to the Echo uh, right off the bat. Now, let me give you a quick examples of what they both do. We'll see some examples of what one does better than the other, and uh, we'll just end up and let you guys decide. I already decided which one I think is better overall, but let's, let's take a look. So first and foremost, the, um, they both can answer questions like, for example, Alexa, what time is it in Paris? The time in Paris is 12.04 a.m. on Monday. Okay, Google, what's the weather like? In Fairburn, it's 29 and clear. It's predicted to be 24 and partly cloudy. Alexa, tell me a joke. What's more amazing than a talking dog? A spelling bee. Oh, I didn't say it'd be a good joke, but they can tell jokes. All right. Okay, Google. Sing happy birthday. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to the most amazing person in the universe. Happy birthday to you. For the birthday, I'm definitely going to give it to Google Home. Alexa, sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. So again, they both do the same thing. Obviously, when it comes to singing happy birthday, Google Home is it takes it for the win there. Now, here's an important thing that um, we, we are going to hear hopefully more and more about as time goes on, and that's which device is more conversational. And what I mean by conversational, and this is where, they, as far as I'm concerned, they're all pretty dumb. Whether it's the ones on your phone or the ones that are sitting right here, they're not as smart as I'd like them to be when it comes to conversation. Like, for example, um, uh, how long or how long, or what time does the drugstore close? And they would tell you. And then the next thing I'd want to know is how long does it take to get there? That's a conversation. In other words, follow up on that last answer and give me a new, uh, you know, uh, uh, let me ask additional questions based on that without having to start the query all over again. That's what I mean by conversational. Now I'll tell you right off the bat, Google Home is winning that right that battle right now. Alexa is okay in certain areas, but Google Home is more conversational than uh, the Echo. So let's take a look at how they work. Uh, so for example, uh, let's say, um, Alexa, what time is sunset today? Sunset is at 5.47 p.m. Okay. Now, I want a follow-up question like, what about Friday? So let's, let's ask Google Home or Thursday. Okay, Google, what time is sunset? The sun will set at 5.47 p.m. Okay, Google, what about Thursday? The sun will set at 5.51 p.m. So she gave me the answer for both today and Thursday. Alexa, what time is sunset? Sunset is at 5.47 p.m. Alexa, what about Thursday? Here's the forecast for Thursday, January 12th in Fairburn. Look for lots of clouds with a high of 68 and a low of 48. She completely blew it on that. She started giving me a weather forecast for Thursday. She completely forgot about the sunset question. So Google Home wins the conversational piece right now. It's not that Alexa can't do conversations. It's just that Google does more of them. Uh, what about math problems? A lot of times I'm asking questions from across the room because I'm in the middle of trying to hang something or figure something out. So in the case of math, I, I kind of like to know things uh, without having to bring out my calculator or my phone. For example, okay, Google, what is 8,365 divided by 35? The answer is 239. Now, the one thing about Google Home I notice is that she gives more answers just straight to the point. Let me ask a question, a math question of Alexa. Alexa, what is 18% of 1,204? 18% 18 of 1,204 is 216.72. Notice how she repeated the question. And a lot of times that's important when you're trying to do certain things where you kind of, you, you may not even remember what the question was that you're getting to ask. Now, um, I expect Google to know more things because after all, it is by the company that runs the search engine that we that we want to know um, things from. So for example, um, okay Google, when was the first moon landing? From July 16th to 24, 1969. Okay, not bad. Alexa, when was the first moon landing? 1969 moon landing was on Sunday, July 20th, 1969. And I would just say they're both right. Of course, Alexa was just a little bit more wordy in her response. Now, this is where uh, things get a little bit more interesting. When you ask it, things like how to do things. So for example, Alexa, how do I change a tire? Hmm, I'm not sure what you're asking. For help with that, go to the Alexa app. 
So now it's asking me to pick up my phone. At that point, I might as well just use my phone. Okay, Google, how do I change a flat tire? According to DMV.org, remove your spare and the tools you will need. Place flares or reflective triangles behind your vehicle for safety. If you're changing your tire on the road, place wheel wedges against the tires opposite of the flat. Okay, this Google. Will help keep your cancel. So Google does what I expect it to do. In this case, it went and looked up an answer from a source and started reading back that answer, whereas Alexa just gave up because it wasn't one of the built-in things you could do. Now, when it comes to music, I'm not going to have either one play any music because I'm recording this video to or this review to show on the internet. And the problem is if I start playing a song, that song is most likely copyrighted and I don't have the copyright to it and it'll get blocked by YouTube and so forth and so on. So just to avoid that hassle, let me explain how they handle music. With Amazon, you have, of course, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you have Amazon Prime Music. You already are paying for it. And so Alexa's tied into that right off the bat and have to have her play a specific song, specific artist, kinds of music. Um, and I, I'm going to give the whole music category to the Echo for a few reasons. Uh, not only, number one, can it play more kinds of music uh, from different kinds of services. So they both do Pandora, they both do Spotify, but um, the Echo does more services like iHeartRadio, uh, Tune, or was it TuneIn Radio, and a few others that the Google Home just doesn't do. Now the Google Home uh, has the Google Play Music and the YouTube Premium Music Store, um, which of course you, you pay for their YouTube Premium Music. But they both do music. They both sound great, but if you're looking for the most possible music playback that you can have, the Echo, especially if you're a Prime member, is going to um, surpass the Google Home and types of music that it can play. The also, the other weird thing is the Google Home uh, can't, or the Google Home can't, or at least from my experience, hasn't been able to play like a specific song, like just play X song by X artist. Um, and whereas the, the uh, Echo will do that. The Google Home will do it sometimes, depending on the song and the artist, the uh, Echo will do it more often and do it correctly. And also, uh, like over the holidays, I would tell the Echo to play things like, you know, play holiday music. And we'll just start playing a holiday music playlist, a music I don't own. Um, or play um, play dinner music. And we'll start playing like these cool dinnery jazz sounds. Uh, so again, I'm going to give the music category to the Echo without having to play any music right off the bat. But note that they sound great. Um, the Echo, of course, sounds a little bit better. Uh, and they have the ability to play music from a variety of different sources, some of which are free, like Pandora and Spotify. Okay, next up, what about um, digital assistants? So this is kind of the one that shocked me in a way. For example... Okay, Google, what's on my calendar tomorrow? Sorry, I couldn't find anything relevant in your calendar. And you're thinking, well, maybe he doesn't have anything on his calendar. Fine, let's add something. Okay, Google, add team meeting to my calendar at 12 p.m. tomorrow. Sorry, I can't add events to your calendar yet. What? You're Google. You have Google Calendar. What do you mean you can't add things to my calendar yet? Alexa, what's on my calendar tomorrow? Tomorrow, there is one event. At 1 p.m., there's live stream. I think you mean live stream, but I get it. <laughs> Alexa, add team meeting to my calendar tomorrow at 12 noon. That's team on Monday, January 9th at 12 p.m., right? Yes. Okay, I've added that. So added and confirmed. Now, what about the category of shopping? Like a lot of times, um, both can add things to a shopping list. So you can just say, hey, add bread to the shopping list, and they'll both do that. But the uh, Google Home can't really order anything, whereas the Amazon Echo is tied into Amazon. So it can actually order things for you. So for example, um, Okay, Google, order um, angel sauce. What do you mean? <laughs> okay, Google, order bathroom tissue. 
According to Wikipedia, toilet paper is a tissue paper product primarily used for the ablution of the anus and surrounding area of fecal material after defecation <laughs> by human females for cleaning the perennial area of urine after okay, Google. another bodily... Cancel. So, she told me what toilet paper is, but didn't really give me any help in ordering it. Um, Alexa, order Angel Soft Bathroom Tissue. Based on Terry's order history, I found Angel Soft Toilet Paper, 48 double rolls. It's $23.48 total, including tax. Would you like to buy it? Cancel. Canceling. Now, had I said yes, she would have placed the order. That's it. Default credit card, charged, order placed, be here in two days, Amazon Prime. So, clearly, the Amazon Echo wins the category of just being able to buy things. Now, if you're concerned about random people in your home uh, ordering things that you don't want them to order or having access to things that you don't want them to have access to, you can clearly, or one of the things you can do is set up a pin so that the order has to be confirmed with a four digit pin that no one else knows but you. So people, random people in your house just can't order things like Dow houses and other gadgets. Okay, so shopping, I definitely give the um, category to uh, the Amazon Echo. Now, the, one of the biggest categories is probably the reason why I have multiple Amazon Echo products in my home is because I also want smart home integration. And this is where uh, Google Home is just getting started, and Amazon Echo is leaps and bounds ahead. And what I mean, mean by that is the ability for either device to control smart home appliances, uh, lights, controls, things like that. They both can do it, but the, in the case of the Google Home, for example, it can only control like three or four things. It can control Nest products, which of course are by Google. It can control your Chromecast, which of course is by Google. It can control your Hue lights and uh, um, products from smart things. That's about it. Done. You need something else control like a Wemo remote or Lutron lights or anything like that. Can't do it. Whereas the Amazon Echo has third-party support via what are called skills. So it can do things like um, add in more capabilities. Just a third party comes out with a new device. They can add that capability to the Echo just by or Echo just by making a skill. You add that skill either verbally or through the app, and next thing you know, you're controlling that device. So, for example, Alexa, turn on right display case. Okay. So that's my right display case. There's a left one over there, but that's my right one. Just turned on. That was it. That's that case is plugged into a Lutron Casita uh, lamp module that all I had to do was add the Lutron skill to the Echo via the app, and that's it. It can now control all the lights and everything in my home that's controlled with the Casita system. Alexa, turn off right display case. Okay. So anywhere in the house, wherever there's an Echo, I can control anything else in the house that's set up um, via, the, via the skills that are built in. Now there are other, or add it, there are other skills uh, that can be added. For example, like I said, the Echo has, at uh, last count, 62 possible smart home skills compared to three or four on the, or the Google Home. All right, next up, um, speaking of skills, it also, um, oh, one more smart home skill. Let me show you this one. Alexa, tell alarm.com to arm stay. Are you sure you want to arm stay your security system? No. Okay. Had I said yes, it would actually alarm my alarm system in the stay mode, which means I'm home, but turn on the um, perimeter doors and windows. Um, just don't turn on the motion uh, sensors. So being able to control your smart home devices like that is definitely the reason why I love the Amazon Echo products. Now, um, again, it won't be, it, it doesn't mean that Google Home won't get these things in the future, but today Amazon Echo has them, Google Home doesn't. All right, now speaking of skills, you can also have some skills that are kind of fun. For example, Alexa, play Jeopardy. Welcome to Jeopardy J6. Here are the latest clues from Friday. Let's get started. The first category is 
Writers on Film. In this 1998 Best Picture Oscar winner, Joseph Fiennes played the bard. What is Shakespeare in Love? That's correct. The second category is Chemical Element Symbols. AS is the symbol for this poison. What is arsenic? That's correct. The next category Alexa, is... Alexa, pause. Please answer in the form of a question Alexa, starting with phrases. stop. So, you get the idea. Way more capabilities here just by adding third-party skills. And there are literally dozens, hundreds, if not thousands of skills that can be added. Definitely dozens or hundreds. All right, there, that's it. We can sit here asking questions all day long, but you get the idea. Cool products, great to have. My favorite, my absolutely favorite, favorite. Both are favorites. This one's coming along, but if I had to buy one, it'd be this one. All right, guys, take care. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.